Hello, and thank you for watching this video. Today, I'm going to go over a couple different tricks and techniques on how to use PowerShell to import a .csv file to a variable, and then take that information and be able to parse through that data, giving it uh, comparison operators along with logical operators, which will allow you to output the data that you're going through into different type of formats, which can be very handy when you have large amounts of data. So with that, let's get started. I've got a simple CSV file currently with seven rows. I've got a screenshot of it right here. The, the different columns includes a uh, column ID, column username, column date, column host name, column location, column occupation. I just manned, I just made up a lot of these uh, just to have some data to play with. Um, and we're going to take this and we're going to pipe it into a variable here. So starting with our first one, you can see our variable here is called file. And you simply provide the path of where your CSV file is located. So down here, you can see we are already in this directory. And here is our uh, CSV file. We're taking this variable and we are using what's called the import dash CSV command. This is the module that PowerShell uses to interpret a dot CSV file. And so we're basically saying uh, we're defining a new variable called data and we are calling the other variable file, which includes the location uh, and assigning to that data. And then the next step we're doing here is making another variable called results. And this is where we're taking the data variable from above where we just defined and we're using the where object operator to go and identify the username column and we're providing what's called the comparison operator of equal. EQ means equal and we're giving it a name. And in this case, if we pull this back up, you can see um, that name does show up one time here. So let's give this a run and see what happens. Oh, and then the last part is then we're just printing that results variable, uh, which should give us the results itself. So we'll go ahead and run it and you can see how it outputs it. So it gives us everything on that entire row that it matches, which is ID one, uh, date, and everything else, as you can see, and it stacks it. Now, if you want to format this differently, you can do that. If we uh, use the pipe, we can do what's called FT. Uh, FT means format uh, table, which we run that, and you can see it splits it up uh, into what you would expect to see in the CSV. Um, so different little things that you can do. Um, moving on to the second script here, um, we've changed it up now. Now we're, we're going to just, we are going from the first name was uh, Sam Blackman. The second one now we're just going as first name. So let's go ahead and clear this and rerun it. And you notice nothing returned. The reason for that is because specifically what we're looking for is anything equal uh, to just Sam. Now you're probably wondering, well, Sam shows up there. Now you would be correct. However, in this particular instance, equal is an exact match. So in this case, it did not find anything. So let's move on to test three. In this case, we've changed it up. Instead of us using equal, we now pass it the like comparison operator. What the like comparison operator does is it allows you to use what's called wild cards. So if you notice in front of and behind the word Sam, we have wild cards. What that means is any value that's in this user row that has Sam somewhere within the word, it's going to return it. So let's run this and watch what happens. And there you go. You can see it, it uh, returned it there. So moving on to our next one, a different way you can do this is not equal any. So not equal Sam. So what this should do is show us everything because nothing matches Sam. And as you can see, it all shows up there. So complete opposite of this particular case. Moving on from that, we're going to go and we're going to change rows. So before the last four, we've been talking solely on the locations. Let's change it up to, or excuse me, before we were changing, we were pointing it to username. We're moving it to now locations. So to do that, 
we simply change after the period. Now you may be wondering, what does this dollar sign underscore mean? And that's a good question. So whenever there's a pipe used, the dollar sign underscore references the variable to the left of the pipe. So this says you are attaching date dot and then whatever the column name is in this case. So we're moving from username to location. And in this case, we said, okay, let's show everything that is equivalent to Seattle. So let's clear that and run it. And there you go. You see that we've got two results returned. And again, if you want to format this a little differently to make it a little easier, we just give it the pipe FT. And now we put it in rows into a format table as an example. Moving on to the next one, we are going to use another example with the like uh, command, this time on the location. And you can see now I've just given it a single letter. So everything that has the word or the letter, uh, excuse me, L is going to return. So let's run that in the location. And you can see, sure enough, Seattle has an L. Portland has an L. So we got three results there. Move it on to uh, a new column. We're going to the date column. So now we are changing it up to the C date column. You can see we've got dates listed in here. So now we're looking for a date like uh, wildcard 8 slash 8. So this should return every date that begins with 8 or August in this case. So let's run that. And there we go. We can see that uh, this date begins with an 8 and this result begins with an 8, which matches to here. All right, perfect. Moving on from here, we've got, uh, we're going to the next column. So we're going to uh, occupation. And in this case, we're looking for CEO equals CEO. Let's return that data. And sure enough, there we go. We've got that. Two results return. Going to the next one. Now let's do the opposite of that. Let's do not equal. And so this returns all of the other items that the occupation does not match CEO. Now we're going to change up the comparison operators and we're going to uh, do what's called the greater than. So GT means greater than. So in going back to our diagram here, column A is ID, which has a number. So with this new operator, we are saying return any item that is greater than five. So that means we should only get one item. So let's go ahead and run that. And there we go. Sure enough, we just got the single item. And to our next one, we're going to do uh, similar. So before it was greater than GT, the next one is called GE. Can you guess what that is? If you guess greater than or equal to, that would be correct. So now we should get two results, six, five and six. And there we go. Almost done here. Uh, the opposite of that is uh, LT. And if you guessed less than, you would be correct. So now this should return all items less than five. So let's run that. And it sure enough does. Four, three, two, and one. Perfect. Second last one to go, the equivalent of uh, LE is less than or equal to five. So now it should be the exact same results with the exception of adding five into the list as well. And there we go. We can see five got appended. And again, now that we've got a multiple items here, let's format that just into the table, just to again, show you what that looks like. It makes it a little bit easier when you start stacking a lot of stuff. And the last thing here, um, actually one other re uh, thing that we can do with the results, uh, which can be handy as well, is what's called output file. So let's, uh, let's, let's do, let's format that and call it, uh, let's do the commands called out file and let's call it just test. Uh, what is this? Test 13 dot text. So now if we go ahead and list our directory, you can see there's nothing in here, but our data, if we run this and we recheck, you can see now we have a 
file called test13. Let's go ahead and take a look into that. And there we have it. So it piped that result to a flat file. So if you needed to reference that later and not store it in a, a variable, you can do it that way. All right. And for the last example, we are uh, stepping up the complication a little bit, but follow along and you'll understand what we're trying to do here. So we are using the not like and, and the and comparison. And so what this is saying is we are passing it two conditions. The parentheses says run this first, run this first, and then do what this says. So because there is two conditions, this is going to return all results in the location column that does not include Seattle and does not include Washington, D.C. So let's run that and see how that looks. Perfect. And you can see we have two results, location being Portland and New York. And again, the way that looked here in our data is like, so let me clear all this out. And so that was excluding DC here and Seattle, which brought back those two locations. With that, uh, we'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more how-to videos. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.